we start, we go to the archives. This one, this way? Yeah. Uh, this is a great one. You know, when I went to summer camp, they had one like this, and 78s, and they had a lot of these tracks. But you know what he's got, what's there? That's a Rhino reissue of a 78, oh. but it's a micro groove cut, oh. and it's on vinyl. Nice. Yeah, so Such tapes were used, two inch, and then five years later, a new generation was coming for video, one inch. So let's try one inch, but we cannot stop two inch because we are, we are not convinced about the quality of the new one. Uh, so for every concert in the end, we have several recordings. And sometimes we need several tapes for one concert. And then we need the audio archives only because uh, the track, the quality of the audio track on the video uh, support is not good enough. So uh, we have multi tracks now, uh, even recording of every instrument alone on that kind of uh, tape, a little bit smaller for 24 tracks. It was in 1973. In the end, more than 25 different formats, and uh, EPFL uh, got in touch with Claude Knobs in 2007. Uh, a little bit before, actually. But Patrick uh, Ebicher, the president of the school, came here in 2007 and he saw all the collection and he said immediately, do you have a copy of that? No. Well, you should do something because it will, it will get lost. And all that, it's, uh, it's expensive, especially in 2007 and 10, to, to start a big digitization project like this. And the idea from Patrick was this one. Okay, we can try and help you coordinate everything in uh, digitization but then as an exchange uh, you give us a license for using this content in research education innovation mm -hmm. in acoustics signal processing um, uh, neuroscience musicology museology design architecture social and human science lot of different topics and uh, and now we have more than 300 researchers we have several of them here yeah uh, which are working on it, getting students, and very nice project. So, yeah. so that's the concept. The, the archive became an infrastructure for research at EPFL. Not only at EPFL, it's of course open to all partners who are interested uh, in working. All those researchers can enrich the collection, and of course the collection enriches the work from the academic world, because Montreux Jazz Festival is a really nice label to to showcase when we develop something new. So Touraj developed, for example, the, uh, this algorithm to, do, uh, to, to detect the defects and then correct them. Uh, we did a lot of machine learning to identify uh, instruments in the image and even to automatically extract nice thumbnails for every song. There are 50,000 songs, so you cannot do that manually. Uh, but the, the system works very well. And then you, you have to, your thumbnails, or even more, you can select what type of content you'd like uh, in a semi-automated uh, version. We did a lot of uh, platforms, installations for the public to discover the archive in an immersive way. Uh, one of the, this was uh, rebuilding the Casino Cursal in Montreux, the first one that burned down in 1971. You remember Deep Purple. Smoke on the Water was written in that occasion. Uh, we, had the Mo we have the Montreux Jazz Heritage Lab at EPFL, uh, which is the one in the Montreux Jazz Cafe. We have the small version in a car. Uh, this is the prototype on the picture here. We call that Nina, in reference to Nina C1. And it's a kind of ambassador, a small version of an immersive uh, installation. And then we have the dome from Sarah Kandodai. 
uh, which is based on this, the view you have here, uh, which is a representation of all the musicians who came to Montreux. This was designed by a PhD in a signal processing group at EPFL, Kirel Benzi. Uh, some of you know him, I don't know where you are. <laughs> Uh, so the idea was to represent every artist with a point. And if two artists play together, there is a line between the points. So you see here all the bands who played alone without merging with any other one on the border. And at the center, this kind of galaxy, uh, which represents all the big talents, big artists who came many, many times, like B.B. King in yellow. He came 23 times in Montreux. You have George Duke in orange. 23 times. Well. Yeah. <laughs> And this was made uh, live, animated, in the dome. And this is now the way you can select the concerts through the artist. You have a big bowl in your hand. This is the mouse. And you navigate, uh, hearing just a sample of every uh, title. And then you select one. And the next project will be a big panorama. Uh, and here it will be the result of the Synergia project with Sarah Kenderdine. And we will merge archive samples together with live performance. And that's what we do with the, the, the EDA, the uh, School of Art in Valis. Christophe Follet will organize the, the live things. And this will be the first time for Sarah to design something where there is really a live concert happening. Mm -hmm. And you can really play between live and archives. And that's what we do in the frame of uh, a group that we call Living Archive Research Group, which is done to fill in the gap in the archives. If we miss a few samples, why not uh, calling artists, visual artists or musicians to create something for this concert based on the history, the stories uh, we know about this uh, event. Uh, so there are many new ways actually of uh, adding value to, to this archive. And that's what we do, of course, VR. Uh, arch in archiving, we have DNA storage, and we say a word afterwards. And um, yeah, we have a big storage at EPFL for this archive. Of course, we need three copies to store everything. Uh, one copy is here on LTO tapes. Uh, no, I don't. Ah, yeah. So those are LTO tapes. Uh, we have um, more than 2,500 of them for the full. We decided to digitize everything uncompressed, so in the really the best quality, so it takes a lot of uh, room, nearly three petabytes now. Uh, so we have another set of this at EPFL. And as a third copy, we have a storage on servers, on hard drives. And this was offered to us as a donation by Western Digital. We could install one at the festival, we have three, it's decomposed in three units. Two of them are at EPFL, and the third one is uh, in the data center here in Montreux, which allows us to immediately ingest the new concerts the, the evening after the concert. And we can work on that during the night and start documenting the day after in order maybe to showcase it on platforms we might have at the festival the next evening. And this is a nice. Uh, opportunity to, to showcase all this work. We did that in 2016 for VR, and then later on with uh, Touraj as well in 2018, even live. So this was amazing because we had placed 360 cameras on stage, and then the person can wear the glasses and be on stage at two meters of the musician with the public in front, and we had 3D audio. We had a partner in Germany uh, managing to use the multi-tracks in real time and with the tracking of uh, the VR glasses when you turn your head you have really the, the true sound field changing and this is much stronger for the emotion and in this case since we were live doing the stitching for one of the first time doing the stitching real, nearly real time uh, real time but with a short short delay uh, you wear the glasses you, you had the glasses and you could imagine that you were virtually at this place on stage while it was happening it, it was now so amazing as a as a feeling wow left the quarter inch there
so this is all going to be moved. All, all this, analog. Is this all going to be moved to this building here? No, I think this will stay here. Yeah. It's just we have project in digital to protect the wow. camera. Can I walk in here? Yes. So which one you prefer? <laughs> the, the Close me in. Original analog master. This is crazy. Progress recollecting all those bits and objects from any system that got And the mommy is yelling now And her daddy has told her to go So we received maybe six months, I would yes. say six months, but maybe sometimes the day before, I don't know, because it's <laughs> no, no, show business. <laughs> and we received like all the layout and the setup that they need to do for the artist, so what they need, how much, which color, which brand, completely depends. And that's what we're talking about. There is a lot of drums, of course, because an artist, he will have his own guitar, but sometimes not.